The purpose of this video is to um, brush up on some of the concepts related to continuous time Fourier transform and cosine or sine signals uh, that you might have seen in the LSS linear systems class. So this is a problem where we are given an x of t which is a pure cosine uh, which has frequency of uh, 3000 pi radians per second and a phase shift of 3 pi by 4. And the first is what is the Fourier transform of this? So let's look at the solution. So you can solve this problem using first principles as long as you remember that the Fourier transform of a complex exponential e to the j omega naught t is 2 pi delta of omega minus omega naught. So if we remember that, then solving a is very easy. We have to solve A. We'll first write x of t using Euler's identity. So we get 3 of cosine 3000 pi t minus 3 pi by 4. I'm going to use the Euler's identity, which is cosine of theta equal to e to the j theta plus e to the minus j theta over 2. So using that, I'll write this as 3 e to the j 3000 pi t minus 3 pi by 4 plus e to the minus j 3000 pi t minus 3 pi by 4 and this will be divided by 2 so I'll bring that to outside or oh, that's 2 so this is my Euler's identity and now I can find the Fourier transform of this expression by using the linearity of the Fourier transform. So Fourier transform of x of t is simply 3 by 2 Fourier transform of e to the j 3000 pi t times e to the minus j 3 pi by 4 plus 3 by 2 Fourier transform of e to the minus j 3000 pi t times e to the j 3 pi by 4. Okay. Now this quantity that you see here these are constants. These two quantities do not depend upon time, so they are constant and again by the linearity of the Fourier transform I can pull them out. So I get 3 by 2 e to the minus j 3 pi by 4. Fourier transform of e to the j 3000 pi t plus 3 by 2 e to the j 3 pi by 4. Fourier transform of e to the minus j 3000 pi t. And now I'm ready to apply this formula that we talked about. So that will be 3 by 2, so the 2 will cancel, so I'll just write 3 pi e to the minus j 3 pi by 4 delta of omega minus 3000 pi plus 3 pi e to the j 3 pi by 4 delta of omega plus 3000 pi. So this is the Fourier transform expression for my cosine and if you actually think about this this makes natural sense what this is saying is that the Fourier transform of my cosine it has two impulses, one at 3000 pi, the other at minus 3000 pi. And then the area of those direct deltas are 3 pi for both of them. And they are phase shifted by minus 3 pi by 4 and 3 pi by 4 respectively. So we can now go back to the second problem that we have which is provide magnitude and phase plots for the CTFT. So we have 
obtained the formula now what I want to do is I want to actually give the phase and magnitude and phase plot so B is magnitude and phase plots okay so the magnitude plot is pretty simple the magnitude of this is simply two impulses at 3000 pi and minus 3000 pi and they will have area of 3 pi so if I write that so my magnitude plot is is simply going to be one impulse at 3000 pi with area of 3 pi this is this one and then the other impulse at minus 3000 pi the area is still 3 pi okay these quantities are only phases and where do these phases exist these phases only exist at the frequencies minus 3000 pi and 3000 pi so if i were to do phase plot so this is my phase plot of x of j omega so at the frequency of 3000 pi my phase is minus 3 pi by 4 right remember the uh, phase is what if you have e to the j theta your phase is theta so in this case my phase is minus 3 pi by 4 so at 3000 pi I have a phase of minus 3 pi by 4 and at minus 3000 pi I have a phase of so this is due to this part and my phase is simply 3 pi by 4 so that's 3 pi by 4 okay so my phase are two just discrete numbers and everywhere else I'll assume that they are just zero and that's my solution to the problem we found the ctft of the cosine using first principles and also were able to plot the phase and magnitude of the this cosine now we want to solve another problem which again uses fourier transform of cosine and it helps you find out uh, what does the modulation operation do so if you take basic linear systems and signals class you must have seen this uh, this is called modulation so you take your signal and you multiply it with cosine or sine this operation is called modulation and what we'll see is that modulation basically takes the frequencies of a signal and shift it to higher frequencies and then you can have a reverse operation called demodulation so the problem is saying this is your block diagram you have x of t mul getting multiplied by cosine so we, you have modulation the x has this Fourier transform given by it's from minus 50 pi to 50 pi and the question that is being asked is first of all you have to compute the mathematical expression for the modulated signal s1 of j omega and then you have to provide a plot for s1 of j omega and this plot will really help you understand what does uh, the modulation operation do so the first part is very simple if you remember your properties of the continuous time Fourier transform so we have to do the use the modulation property of the CTFT so that property says that if you have two signals X of T and Y of T multiplied in time then in the frequency domain they are actually their Fourier transforms are convolved so this is also obvious from the duality principle if you remember that convolution in time is multiplication in frequency and multiplication in time is convolution in frequency except that you have to have this 1 over 2 pi scaling factor because the frequencies we deal with are in radians per second so we'll use this formula to solve part a so s1 of t 
is simply x of t cosine of 2000 pi t. So that's cosine of 2000 pi of t. Okay. So that means that S1 of j omega is simply equal to 1 over 2 pi x of j omega convolved with the Fourier transform of cosine of 2000 pi t. But we just looked at what is the Fourier transform of a cosine. So that will be the Fourier transform of a cosine is simply two deltas. So that's pi of delta, one delta at 2000 pi. So that's the positive frequency and the other delta at negative 2000 pi, which is the negative frequency. Remember that a cosine is and, and sine are made up of two frequencies, one positive, one negative. So this is the expression. So uh, this means that S1 of j omega is equal to 1 over 2 pi. Now convolution is linear, so we'll basically just take the summation, uh, we'll uh, distribute the convolution over the summation. So we'll get pi x of j omega convolved with delta of omega minus 2000 pi plus pi of x of j omega convolved with delta of omega plus 2000 pi. Okay, we'll, we'll take the pi outside, so we'll only be left with 2, so we'll cancel these two pi's. Now you should also remember the relationship of when you convolve a signal with a direct delta, what happens? Basically the signal just gets shifted to the location of the direct delta. So using that property, this first piece will simply be 1 half x of j. This whole thing will get shifted to 2000 pi plus 1 half x of j omega plus 2000 pi. So that's your answer for the modulation property. Now in part b we want to plot this. So that is pretty simple. We have we are effectively going to get two copies of my signal. One will be shifted at 2000 pi and because of one half factor, if you rem remember the, the expression, it goes up to two from minus 50 pi to 50 pi. So what we will, what we will get here is the same spectral content. It will be scaled by one half and this point will be 20, 50 pi. pi and this will be 1950 pi. And similarly, we'll have another copy at minus 2000 pi, which will look exactly the same, except that it will be at negative frequencies. And that is your plot for S1 of j omega. This modulation operation, as you can see, this operation actually happens in all kinds of communication devices, radios, your cell phones, where basically, let's say you are trying to hear a, a song, which is, you hear up to 20 kilohertz, but radio stations need to have different frequencies, of, uh, want to occupy different frequencies. One radio station operates at 101.3, the other operates at 94.3, that frequency is 94.3 megahertz. And so what they will do is they will actually modulate your song with that frequency's cosine, for example, to shift the frequencies to higher frequencies so that they can transmit and they don't get interfere with other radio stations. So this is 
graphically what is happening that we started with a signal whose spectrum is lying around zero but by doing modulation we shifted it to the frequency of the sinusoid hopefully these two exercises are enough to get you started on basic principles of ctfd and uh, cosines